In this video, we'll go through an initial example of using R and R Studio to do some basic data analysis. The instructions to this walkthrough you can find on the Eclair webpage datasquad.github.io forward slash ECLR. The link will be in the uh, description to the video. And there's a number of um, exercises here you can go through. The one we are looking at is the first steps. Um, is the first steps exercise here. And there's a data file for you to download. Um, if you click on this link, you get to this page and then you can download the file on this download button here. If you download that, in my case, that goes to my download folder. And then importantly, you need to move that file into a folder from which you want to work. In my case, I have created a folder on my C drive called R code. And in here, I saved that file. So that's 19 underscore gm underscore act data. Okay, that's the file you could download from the Eclair web page. And that is very important that you know where that file is. So this as far as the prep work. Now we go to R Studio, and in R Studio you need to I've already done that, but let me just actually when you open R Studio, it will look like this. So what we want to do is you want to create a new script file. All right, so our script and we want to save that in that same folder in which you have your data file so and let's call it first steps so you can call it whatever you want we save that here so you now you have that script file and that data file saved in the same folder and you know where that folder is All right, so that is important so the instructions to this exercise are these instructions here so there if you click on that link here you get to first steps in r and this works you all through and i will now in this video i will go through some of these instructions but you will find all the detail and written down in this uh in this file okay, so let's move that away but i will work through uh through some of uh through some of this so what we want to do is we want to um, upload this data file but the first thing you should always do is there's sort of two elements we have to be aware of we need some packages and we need to set our working directory so let's start with the second set our working directory and the command we need to put into the script file is set wd and then in inverted commas we need our working directory. Now, I happen to know what it is. It is uh, on my C drive. It's this one. So I can type this and I can run it. And when you see down here at the bottom, that command has just run without any error message. So now my working directory is set here. So that's important because soon we will be asking R to upload a data file and give it that name, GMs, that's whatever the full name was, but you need R needs to know where to look for that file. And by default, it will look in your working directory. You can confirm what the working directory is by going into the console and type get WD and open and close parenthesis and press enter. And it tells you, well, my working directory is now CR code. If you are not quite sure what the whole path to your file is, there's a little trick you can go up here to sessions let me actually also just make that um, everything a bit bigger okay you can also go to the session option here go to set working directory and to source file location and then i will automatically check hey where have you saved that script and will run this code and then you see down here what R did and then you can just copy that into your code for so for the next time you use that so that was the first important step and don't st skip on that step otherwise things will not be working okay so next 
if you look at the instructions files, you will realize that we will need some libraries. Now, what are libraries? Libraries are pieces or bundles of code that people have written and have made available for other people to use. And the two libraries or packages we want to use here are called the Tidyverse package and the ggplot package. Tidyverse for all sorts of data handling stuff and ggplot to create nice graphics. Now, importantly, if for the first time you're running, so if you're now sitting in front of our studio and you're running this for the first time, you should expect to get an error message because packages before you can use them before you can use a package you need to install it on your computer there are two ways to install them perhaps the easiest is to go here on the right hand side you see the packages tab okay you can see all the packages that have been installed. So I've been using RStudio for a while. There's a number, uh, I have more packages here. And amongst others, we will see, let's check the Tidyverse package. We can scroll down and here is the Tidyverse package. You will not see that the first time. You will not have the Tidyverse package. So what you want to do is you want to go to install, search for Tidyverse, and click on tidyverse and then press install i won't do that because i've already installed it and have that tick install dependencies ticked okay and then tidyverse packs a big package it will install for a while and that's basically like going to the shop buying all the ingredients you need for a nice dinner and putting them into your cupboard right so they are there uh, that you know you can access them and then you do the same with ggplot, okay? Go to install, look for ggplot, ggplot2, and then install. Again, I won't do that here because I've already done it. Once you've done that, remember that's like purchasing, it's all for free, all these ingredients, putting them into your cupboard. Now we're actually doing some cooking. We need these ingredients. Now we need to get them out of the cupboard on our desk. And this is what this library command does. So if I now run this command, put my cursor into the line and press run, this package is installed. There are warning messages and they're in red. That looks a bit like something has gone wrong, but nothing has gone wrong. Warning messages usually are not an issue. Uh, then we also want to call the ggplot2 library, make the code available. So cursor in there and either the run button or on a Windows machine, press Control Enter or on an Apple Command Enter to run this line. Okay, and that line has run without any issues. Okay, so everything is fine despite the red print here. So let's continue. Um, let's continue on. Now we want to upload some data. The data are saved in our folder as a CSV file, okay? A comma separated values file. That is actually, in fact, just a test text file. Okay? You can open that file with just any sort of text editor. If my computer wasn't so slow, I could show you. You can open it just with a text editor and um, but it's basically a spreadsheet where the columns are separated by commas. So the function to upload this into R is called read.csv. So we run this and now you can see that our data have now been made available. They have been uploaded. They appear here in your environment. Okay, we asked R to read 
that file and to save it in an object called ag for accident data. Right? These are the data, as you can see from the detailed description on Eclair, these are data about accidents in Greater Manchester. And if something is available or shows in your environment, that means you can use it. That's very important to understand. R can use everything that is in your environment. So, with that in the bag, let's see what we want to what we want to do next. So, you need to understand whenever you do data analysis, you need to understand the structure of your data. There are two ways to do that here. You could just double click on that little spreadsheet symbol and the data opens just as if there were a spreadsheet. And now you should always do that. Right? And you see all the different sort of columns, there are the variables, and you can see that we have 42,500 observations. So that's information about 42,500 accidents in the Greater Manchester area in the United Kingdom, that is. And for each accident, we have 27 variables. That means we have 27 pieces of information. So you can see that in the environment here, 42,624 observations and 27 variables. So, and we can click that away again. Another way to look at your data is to use the str command, the structure command, structure act data, and we can run this. And what you get here in your console is basically a list of these 27 variables. And importantly, what you can see from here is the data type for these variables. And this will be very important. There are some which are numerical here. Okay, integer is also numerical, it's just the whole numbers. These are all numerical variables. But we also have some which are character variables here. Character, for instance, the date or the time is a character variable. Okay, but most of them are integer variables. Okay, so if you really want to understand what some of these, uh, what some of these mean, you will have to look at sort of the data dictionary, which is um, which is linked in the uh, in the instructions file. If you're looking at that link, you get this sort of document basically what you see is sort of the document which police use to record an accident okay and there's for instance you you can see that there's information here on um, the light conditions of the accident there's information on um, whether what type of road the accident happened on what the weather was at the time of the accident, what the road surface condition was. It's all sorts of interesting information here. There's also up here information on how serious the accident was. Okay, was it fatal, serious, or slight? Uh, we will use that information in a moment. So let's click that away. So let's say we wanted to investigate a little bit about the um, what this variable looks like, the severity variable. If we look at our structure command, there's a variable called severity. And you can already see it's an integer variable and takes sort of values here. The first values are all three. If you want to know, what possible values does a variable take? You can use this unique command. Okay, unique, act data, and then dollar severity. That means go to our spreadsheet act data, our data file, or yeah, our data structure. Dollar means which variable? Well, take the variable severity and tell us what are the unique values, what different values do we have for that variable? So let's run that. 
and you can see the variables are 3, 2, and 1. And that corresponds to us having fatal series or slight accidents. But what's not immediately obvious from here is, does 1 mean fatal or does 1 mean slight? So that's not so immediately obvious from here. Down here for the other sort of variables, you see number representations here. So road type 1 means there was a roundabout. But with the seriousness variable, that's not so that's not so obvious. So we need to investigate a little bit. One easy way to investigate is to use the very useful table command. Okay, so we call the function table on the same variable, act data dollar severity. And what you get is a little table. And you see for the three unique values, how many observations we have. For value one in the severity variable, you see there are 582 observations for variable 2, 6,519, and for, sorry, outcome, not variable, for outcome 3, 35,000. So this is by far the most common category. And I think it's possibly, well, pretty safe to say that the most common type of accident will be a slight accident, and the least common one will be a fatal accident. So now we know that one in the severity variable means fatal and three means slight and two is serious. Okay, so now let's talk. Uh, th this is sort of, you know, now we know this, but it would be sort of nice if we could actually define sort of that variable as just saying that directly so we don't have to keep that in mind. So here's how we do that. We turn the variable into, so when, when I copy code here, I'm just copying from the instructions file, which you have also access to, and you can also copy and paste from the website straight into the, into your RStudio. We're creating a factor variables. Now factor variables in R are categorical variables. You know, there's a variable which has a, just a fixed number of possible outcomes. So what we are going to do is, we are in act data, we are creating a new variable, severity f, f for factor. Okay, but you can call it whatever you want. So let's run this line first. And what, how do we define that new variable? Well, it should, we should take the severity variable, which is an integer variable, and turn that into a factor, as dot factor. And then that is assigned to that new one. So the first thing you should recognize, right now we have 27 variables here. And as soon as we run this line, we should have 28. So let's run this line, control enter or command enter. And you can see we have 28. We can look at this again. And now you can see we have a severity variable here, but it still has these numbers, 3, 2, and 1. Basically, it's exactly the same number as here. So in some sense, we haven't really gained anything here. But if we have a factor variable, we can change the labeling of this. So instead of 1, 2, and 3 for fatal series and slide, we just want to call it fatal series and slide. So we do that with the levels command. Uh, we're basically saying, so we could actually check in the console, I'll just copy that here, what are the current levels of that severity f variable? Oh, well, there, one, two, and three. But we want to change these levels to fatal, serious, and slight, because that one represents fatal, two represents serious, and three represents slight, as we figured out before. So we run this line, and now we can look at the table, but not of the severity variable, but the severity f variable. And now we get a nice table which tells us 582 fatal accidents, 6,500 serious, and 35,500 slight. Okay. So if you have variables which are really categorical variables and which have sort of nice sort of names, then we want to, if we can, uh, turn these into these variables. Okay, so what we now want to do is really we want to do that with perhaps a number of other variables. And let's practice this here. 
with us uh, in the um, instructions, we want to do that with the weather condition variable. So we want weather condition f, and we have a variable, let's look at str, we have a variable which should be called here weather condition, okay, which is an integer 1 to 9. So copy. So we want to turn the ag data weather condition variable into the weather condition f variable, which should be a factor of this. So if we run this, we'll create a 29 variable. Let's do that. Okay, so we've done that. 29 variables. But now we could check again what levels. So, so we could now check um, levels of weather condition f. Condition f. And you see it takes values 1 to 9. Now you can see sometimes I do things in the script and sometimes I do things in the console. I do things in the console which I know I don't want to keep, which I need to test something, to check something. But next time if I open the code tomorrow, I don't need that anymore. These things I do in the console, everything I want to keep, I put into the script file. So, what we need to do is we want to change the levels of act data weather condition F. I'll just copy and paste that. And we want this to be, and now we have to basically replicate this just with the right wordings for the weather conditions. Now we can sort of start with this, okay. So see that creates sort of a list of these three things. And now we need to check again what is our what are our weather conditions. And the weather conditions were indicated. Where were they? They were indicated here. Whoops. So you can see what the numbers one to nine represent. So what we now need to do is we need to create this list with all of these names. Okay. So the, the first one was um, fine without high winds and so forth. Let me just uh, do this offline. So here is the full vector. Okay, fine, no wins, rain, no wins, all the way to unknown. That represented nine. So we can run this and then we can uh, check again with table. Let's copy this one here. Table but of weather condition F, we run this. Now you can see the most common weather condition is fine, no winds, with basically almost uh, around three, 75 percent of the accidents happening in fine weather, no winds. Okay, uh, the, the more sort of obscure weather condition, snow and winds, 65 accidents. It doesn't snow very often in Manchester, as you can see. Okie dokie. So, what we let's see what we want to uh, to do next. So we already saw this table command was very useful to look at one variable. What if you wanted to figure out whether not only um, where the accidents happen in terms of weather condition, but also want to figure out whether in different weather conditions, differently severe accidents happen. So what you can do is you can still use that table command, table, and then you say one variable, but if you then say comma and add a second variable, the magic is starting to happen. Okay, press this. And what you see here now is what's sometimes called a cross table. Okay, so you have, we have in the rows, we have the first variable, weather conditions. In the columns, we have the second variable, severity. 
And now you can see that there were 14 accidents when it was raining and there were winds, for, there were 14 fatal accidents. Okay. And um, anything else here noteworthy, for instance, if there was fog or mist, there were four fatal accidents, 78 slight accidents. So this is already quite informative, but you will you will see well okay all these numbers it would be better to have uh, percentages well let's see how to do that here is the line again from the instructions we still have sort of the same line this highlighted is exactly the same as on line 23 but we put that into another function call which is called probability table or proportion table it's called pro proportion table, prop dot table, and the input is basically this table which you see here in the bottom. So let's run this and see what we get. So what you see here is that you get sort of very complicated looking numbers, but they are basically proportions. So we see here, let us see that. So we saw four, 458 fatal accidents in fine no winds. 158 out of the total number of 42,624 turns out to be 0.0107%. So you see this number here, it's e to the negative 2, so the decimal point moves two places to the left. Now this is sort of fairly complicated looking. We can change the way how numbers are shown using the options command. So let's do that here. Uh, we can say, you know, we want two digits. Uh, you can use the help options to see what exactly that means. And now we can uh, rerun this command. Actually, for next time, I'll put that in front of this. Okay. So now we run rerun this. And now you see the numbers look a little nicer to look at. And now you see that sort of 1% about 1% of all accidents happen in fine, no windy conditions and are fatal. By far the largest category is 63% of all accidents are of slight severity and happen in fine, no winds conditions. Now you, said, you may say, okay, that's quite interesting. But really what I want to know is what, you know, what percentage of fatal accidents happen in which weather conditions well we have a solution for this take the same copy and paste the same command and add a comma two to the end let's firstly see what we get and then we'll, we'll, we'll look at why this happened so we run this so the table looks fairly similar but now you can see in this table we produced before, if you added up all of these proportions here in the whole table, you would get one uh, because we're just calculating the proportion of all accidents. Now you see we're already in the first row that if we add these up, we get more, way more than one. So proportions make sense if you understand proportion of what. In the first table, it was proportion of all accidents. Now it is the proportion of all accidents in one column. So this one, 0.7869, tells us that 70, almost 79% of all fatal accidents happened in fine conditions with no wind. 80% of all serious accidents happened in fine conditions with no winds. And let's pick another number. Uh, let's pick this one here, 0.0167. So that's around one and a half percent of all serious accidents happened in rainy conditions with winds. Okay, so this is how this table is done. It has just changed what we calculate the proportion of. Now you may ask, so why did we have the comma two here? Well, the comma two means calculate the proportion of the second dimension. The second dimension was the severity. 
So if we now change that to a 1, it will calculate the proportion in the f of the first dimension, that's the Weber condition. So if we run this command, you can now see that while in this table all the proportions in, um, in one column, so all of these proportions, the sum of these was equal to 1. But now we have a comma 1 in here. We are now calculating the proportions of the first condition, proportion of accidents in particular weather conditions. Now it's the probabilities in one row of which sum to 1. Right, so that's very important to understand, but very useful. And so now you can see that of all accidents that happened in fine conditions with weather conditions with no winds, one and a half percent were fatal and 82 and a half percent were slight. So can we see a type of weather condition where proportionally more fatal accidents happen? Well, the largest proportion is here in fog or misty conditions. 4% of all accidents are fatal. Now we know these are of course more challenging driving conditions and if something goes wrong it's perhaps more likely that things go seriously wrong. So okay so this was just a sort of first indication of some things you can do with your with your data. We looked at uh, different data types, and they were important, how we could change data types to factor variables or so categorical variables, how we could relabel the categories, because you could imagine this table here was much nicer with seeing fatal series and slide rather than just one, two, and three, or one to nine on the weather conditions. That would, would have made it very awkward to read this table. So let's also do some really, really cool stuff. Uh, just to whet your appetite of what you can do with uh, uh, by the way, before I will do that here, uh, we already used that when I copied it across. In your script, everything that follows after a hash is a comment. It will be ignored by R. Okay, so for instance, you may come to the end of the day, you want to remind yourself, oh, tomorrow when I come back, I want to create a nice lot. Okay, but now it's time to meet with friends and go to the movies. You save this. We're closing our studio. So here's this question. Save workspace image to, uh, to, to this and it's r dot dot r dot data. Now it's, I usually I say don't save here and I'll tell you why. Okay. What R is asking you is, do you want me to save everything that is in the environment such that you can use it next time? And you could do that. And you could load that act data up again. But what is more important is that we have saved everything that is in our script. Because once we have the script, we can easily recreate everything we've done. So here I click don't save because I don't want to save that. We can get this back. This is what you need to save the script. So let's save. Cancel. So we want to don't save it here. We want to save the script. Uh, let me actually cancel here. If the script it's not saved. You can see a little asterisk here. Okay, so make sure we save that. We close our studio. Now imagine next day you had a great night out with your friends. You're coming back to work all energized. Just open your first steps script. Now in my case, my computer knows that if I double click on an dot r file that it should open our studio and not r you may first if that doesn't happen you may first have to open our studio and then open the script from there
So now you can see we have first steps. Our script file is here, our recipe of all the things we have done. But there's nothing in the environment. But what you can do is you can just click on that source button up here. Let me just highlight that because it's pretty small here. This source button here. We know we've already used the run button that would run line by line. OK, line with cursor that executes the code in the live line with the cursor. This button here executes all code in the script. And if you come back to work, you don't want to necessarily all by hand go through all of this stuff again. All we're going to do is we're going to just click on the source button and you can see that R will run through all the code. We have our act data here again. And in here, you can see all of the tables which we have created and all of the output is back again. And so this will be our workflow. Everything you want to save goes into the script. And then you don't need to save the environment because you can just rerun all the script using the source button. So, but remember, we wanted to finish this exercise by creating a nice cool plot. And again, all the code for this is in the instructions on Eclair. And I'll first just give you a line of code and we run it and I'll explain a little bit what happens. Let's run it first. Okay. So here is now our plot. I need to change where you can see me. So down here is now a nice plot. And what you can see is this basically looks almost like a road map. And it's basically a map with, you know, in the north south direction, east west, uh, west east direction. And every dot here corresponds to an accident. And as accidents happen on roads, you basically start seeing a road map of Greater Manchester here. And what has happened, and I will not explain the ggplot package and how you create ggplots uh, in detail here. There's an extra session uh, section on the Eclair web page. Um, but just a little bit, we're using the act data to create a plot. On the x axis, we want the easting information on the y axis, the northing. And that's just basically coordinates, which in the accident information, in the accident information, there's an easting and a norving variable. So we know exactly where each accident took place and we're using this information and then just basically create a point, a one point for each accident. And that's just how big that point should be. And that creates this uh, little map. Uh, you can imagine that, hey, there's really cool stuff we can do with this. For instance, we can you know, imagine if you want to write a report, creating sort of plots is really nice. What we're now going to do is we're just doing two small changes. We are adding a title on here. That's what this one does. And instead of only having X and Y information, X and Y here, we're also putting a color information here. And we say change the color according to the road class. Road class is an information we have for each variable uh, for each variable uh, so for each observation there's information on the road class here do we have five six seven two six seven and again these are numbers and uh, if you look at the sorry that's not what i wanted if you look at this you can see road classes um somewhere here oh yeah here road class is up here, sort of information that is entered up here. So let's go back to the code. Let's run this. And what you see now is that the plot just has colored different road classes differently. And you can what what you can see here is that the let me actually uh, zoom into the plot. So we just have a bigger version of this plot that the darker roads are the motorways, the bigger roads, and uh, the lighter the dots, the smaller the roads. So basically, you can now see a really nice road map of Greater Manchester emerging. Um, 
and you could imagine that potentially this may be useful to find sort of accident uh, accident hotspots. So if you wanted to save one of these graphs to put into your report, you would use this uh, little export button. You can, uh, you can see here, there's an export button. Yeah, if we, if you click on that, you can save this as an image or as a PDF, or you can copy to clipboard and then paste into your Word document. So that is of course super cool. All right, I hope this gave you uh, a nice, easy introduction of how to deal with data and also something to look forward to because uh, creating nice graphs is always exciting.